never learn, will I? It's uh, just about 20 past 11, so the sun is pretty high. But hey, what a day. Welcome to Blast Beach, part of the Durham Heritage coastline. Once upon a time, the industry here had ruined this beach, but a clean-up operation has completely transformed it. Talk amongst yourselves while I take this shot. It's not earth shattering. It's a big blue sky. I can't do a lot about it. But it is a beautiful day. And it's quite a nice scene. So let's open with this and I'll talk to you again in a minute. Forgive me, I wouldn't normally start a, a, a video like that, but uh, I've got an incoming tide, uh, a very fast uh, depleting rock to stand on and get a vantage point from, and uh, I didn't want to get wet, so I wanted the shot, and hope you like the shot. Hey, it's one of those difficult days, I mean, I can sure you can see, it's just blue sky. There's, uh, there's a few wispy clouds out to sea, very harsh sun up there and I'll never learn will I it's uh, just about 20 past 11 so yeah sun is uh, pretty high but hey what a day really I mean you know if we weren't taking photographs we'd say this was a beautiful day <laughs> well it is a beautiful day just not a great day for landscape photography but I challenge you also to look at the photo I've just taken and say actually it's a bad photo because of the blue sky because I don't think it is I think we've got a lovely contrast with the cliff top I think we've got a wonderful colour being reflected in the water and if it wasn't a beautiful blue day I don't think the holes through the cliffs over there would be anything like as distinct and obvious in the photo am I just trying to justify this? I don't know let me know what you think of that shot in the uh, in the comments down below <laughs> get that away from the uh, incoming tide for a minute today I want to talk about something that really gets my goat and I've mentioned it countless times before in videos it's the way that my camera and I suppose lots of other cameras it superimposed stuff onto the uh, the screen and the viewfinder which then gets in the way of your shot and makes edge detection very difficult and, and all kinds of things like that I really should read the fucking manual because for 18 months or so that I've owned that camera I didn't know that you could change the way that the menu or not the menu but the uh, superimposed information gets displayed now annoyingly you only appear to be able to change it in the OVF another one of those acronyms that you might not be familiar with unless you RTFM. OVF being optical viewfinder, except of course it's not really an optical viewfinder because there's a little screen projection behind it. Is that, I don't know. Yeah, in which case is it an optical screen at the back? I mean, optical, anyway. You can change the way it displays the data in the OVF. So you can put it in the little bar at the bottom and that's lovely. It, it's, it makes a big difference. And for 18 months I've been moaning about it. So um, what else can the camera do that um, I don't know about? Um, do you RTFM everything? I mean, tech, technical geeks tend not to. They just want to get hold of the, the gear and just use it. And often when we do that, we simply uh, don't know what the thing's capable of. There must be features galore in modern cameras that most people don't know are there. So on days like this, I often, very mindful is water coming up behind me, very often I resort to looking for textures and shapes and patterns. And I've got one here, and I'm just trying to frame something up. I've got to be very careful of keeping the tripod leg 
uh, out of the uh, the shadow, so to speak, and shoot around it. It's just this beautiful rock down here with its kind of stratas and seams and layers, and it's just incredibly lovely. Trying to frame something that is pleasing on the eye. That's not to say that it isn't pleasing on the eye. Yeah, pretty much anywhere I put the camera, but I'm sure there are better places to put it than others. Do I give it a, a degree of purpose? Well, I can shoot a few, can't I? And keep in, yeah, this little bit of shingle down here. Or do I rotate around and just kind of work with this, this line running through it? Brush off the little bits I don't want there. F13 to make sure it's all sharp. I quite like that. And I've said it many times before, but it's a nice day. And, and even with really direct light like this, and you can see the harsh shadows that are being cast, it's really not that important when you've got something that's kind of so flat and matte as this, because it's not picking up those highlights. It's just being evenly lit. And I think it's really nice. It's a nice little just detail study of this. And again, goes to show what you can do on a harsh light day with the right subjects and the right conditions. Anyway, tell me what you think of it. One of the things I really like about photographing things like this is that there's no reference point. Therefore, this could be shot at any height. This could be an aerial shot looking down on an alien landscape. And that's quite fitting given that this beach was used in one of the scenes for Alien 3. going to get a shot over here. Here, the shot is still there. This is coming in fast now. A rock that I stood on over there a while ago has gone. Composition I, I wanted to get with this lens that I've got with another lens, which I'll show you in a moment, I can't, or I don't get now without wellies or even waders. And you'll notice I'm not using a tripod. Part of the reason for that is awkwardness uh, and the ability to be able to move quickly if I have to. And two, well it's a wide angle shot, even at f13, 125th of a second. So, not too bothered by a camera shake, especially since I've got, hey, nearly. And whilst I have waterproof boots on, uh, I don't want the, uh, the sea coming over the top. There's a bit of interest on this rock here with a bit of seaweed on it so let's use that as a line <laughs> uh, I love the scarf but it really does get in the way Oohie. hey I'll select one of those and put it on and you can tell me what uh, what you think of it I mean apart from the photography being kind of just blue sky and me really not minding it today. I'm quite happy with this, it's a lovely day. And whether or not the photos are all right, you know, it barely matters on a day like this, does it? It barely matters. Compositions on the beach are often the struggle for me. Detail on the beach, just looking at the way things have pattern and shape and form and texture, that there, there are no end of subjects that work for that. So you've got here this rock, which was closer to the shoreline uh, a little while ago, and I recovered it and dropped it down here just because it was getting too close to the shore and it was going to get wet and I didn't like uh, the idea of it getting wet because it would create highlights and such uh, where it just that starts to glisten in the sun. So I just got close to it um, with a macro lens and there's, uh, there's countless photos uh, in it. Um, just really look at the detail. I, I don't, you know, I, I'm just fascinated by the detail.
Well, with the fact that this has been a filming location for sci-fi movies, I rather thought that it would be fitting to process these images in a way that makes them look very much like some kind of alien planet surface. It's a very easy technique in Lightroom and very likely some other uh, applications as well. So if you're interested in uh, a video on how I did this, do let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to help me out, please leave a like on the video. It really helps the algorithm. Well, I think I found my favourite image of the day so far. And, uh, well, it's actually not often I say that. The more you watch my videos, the more you'll realise that I do really like the detail. And whilst I've been shooting various bits around here, like, you can probably can't see it there, but there's a, a bit of wood, uh, weather-beaten wood, probably out of the sea. This strand, or above the strand line along here, there's some very different rocks, and... Um, some of them might be out of the cliff. I don't, I, I don't know their origins. But they are incredibly detailed. They're lovely, lovely things. What really got me about the composition I'll show you in a second is just how, how simple it is. How, how let me just show you, because it, it's, it's hard to just describe this. This here may not look like a great deal when you look at it just like that. But in isolation, when you put a frame around it uh, with the, the lens and the camera, it's very different. And what really makes this work is the fact that, let me turn this around again, it is the fact that you've got this lovely kind of circular rock with this very jagged, weather-beaten uh, rock, which is very large, as you can see. And when you get it into isolation in a frame, and you get it kind of in the right place, there's a juxtaposition to the shapes and the colours. And I just love this shot. And uh, anyway, here it comes. Tell me what you think of it. For me, it's by far and away the favourite uh, from this beach shoot so far. to get a uh, charging cable for the Osmo Pocket, because I wasn't carrying one, stupidly. Um, I stumbled upon that bit of rock that's got the little kind of beard of seaweed on it. And I thought, oh, that's really, really nice. The colours really kind of pop with it. It's not wet, so it's not going to glisten too much. Although, it might be nice if it were wet. It's just got a lovely kind of colour and texture to it, and I thought it was wonderful. But rather than lose it somewhere up the beach, I picked it up and walked with it. I consider this to be very much my studio, and if I can't move and arrange things uh, a little, then I uh, kind of what's the point? Oh yeah, sometimes you need to keep things kind of in position, but uh, let's face it, it's a beach. Every change of the tide is likely to mean that things move, and yeah, when we say they're naturally there, well, they're naturally there because they've been put there by the forces of nature rather than they've grown there. So I think there's a big difference in moving something on the beach rather than uh, moving something uh, uh, in a woodland and such. So anyway, I've picked it up and uh, uh, yeah, we can debate the, the where's and why fors of that later on. Because what I then did with it is I put it on a stack of stones to raise it up from the gravel, uh, well it's not gravel, but the pebbles below it. And then I shot it. Now the reason for raising it up is so that I can uh, try and get the background more in a soft focus and therefore yeah, take the eye off that and really just focus on the rock itself because the background is, well, let's face it, a little on the... Um, the busy side so the more we can 
take that back and, uh, and take the eye off it, the better. I think it's a nice shot. Uh, I've already shot it, so here it is. But before I show it to you, I'm not ruling out picking up that stone again and putting it somewhere up on an undisturbed part of this wonderfully red sand, or maybe even up on the, <coughs> the um, higher area up there, which is full of uh, rocks and all kinds of things of very, very different colours. Uh, so you may well see this shot again. In fact, I can pretty much guarantee it. different from the final photo. And it's quite interesting, uh, not particularly to the leaves, but they're providing some patination on the ground. What's wrong with you? I wonder if she's put the kettle on. 